Who? I'm gonna ask you. What's your name, bro? Roan. Oh, Ro- what is it? Roan, like Tyrone without the tie. Roan. Not a Roan. Hey, Go, so, Tyro. <laughs> Go ahead. The Pat Bev Pod with Roan. We have a very, sp- very special one for you guys. We'll get into the interview in just a second, yeah. but first we, we have something that we, we definitely want to talk about, uh, a pressing matter, um, and that's Bronny and his medical condition. Yeah. I'm sure everybody's seen by now after a practice at USC, Bronny went into a cardiac arrest. Thankfully, he's in stable condition right now, but just prayers to- up, prayers, up, prayers up, prayers up, prayers up, bro. Prayers up to, to James' family. You know what I'm saying? Prayers up to him. Prayers up to mom, to his mom, to his grandma. Prayers up to the whole family, bro. Prayers up to the whole family. Terrifying. That's somebody's child. And things like a heart disease or a heart condition can creep up on you in a way that nobody expects. And it's nothing but terrifying. And we're lucky that he's in stable condition. And I don't think basketball is in the forefront of anybody's mind right now. I think it's all just about his health. Yeah, straight up, straight up. We uh, you, know, you get news like that, man. You get, you get news like that. It kind of make you want to hold on to hug your own so hard. You know what I'm saying? So like, prayers up, man. You know, I have you know my daughter. She hoops, and you know, it's to be on the other other end of that, man. It's very unfortunate. So prayers up to Brian. Prayers up to the James family. Uh, Godspeed, Godspeed. Straight up. Yeah, no one cares about USC basketball, mock drafts, what's going to happen with the you know Lakers and LeBron. People care about his health, and that's definitely our prim- primary focus. So we can't say it enough. Prayers up for him, thoughts with the family, and hopefully he yeah. he makes a full recovery and can get back to doing what he love he loves as soon as possible. Yeah, sure. But Pat, you're in Mykonos right now. Yeah, I am. That's kind of. Yeah, the who's the gang? Um, me, Paul George, Zubak, Pat Patterson, Carl Anthony Towns. And who's your spade? So, who's your spades partner of that group? <laughs> I ain't really been doing well in spades, man. I, I told him today I was gonna say it on the pod because I was gonna either hear it on 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 Paul George shit. Uh. I've been losing. I, I mean, I've been flat out just losing. I've been losing. I've, I've we, we've not been winning. Like I, I'm, you know, I, I see it in your up. eyes. Like I yeah. see you're hurt right now. Yeah, I'm like, who's we? I mean, I play with Big Zoo. <laughs> I mean, he's just been losing. Bro. Are you he's down bad for all this phase right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm fucked up, bro. For real, bro. Like for real, like. I have to walk off from 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 them a lot of times, bro. You know me. I, I don't I don't carry lose well at all. Like, yeah, I'm down bad this trip, man. I ain't happy about it. I'm not. I ain't gonna lie to you. Whose fault is it? The cards, bro. Just the cards, bro. I don't. It's... Well, if it's just the cards, then you just keep playing, and things will start going your way eventually. No, I just start my eventually, but then I switch my partner. I lose with that person, and then we got bets, and whoever loses got to jump off a boat and shit. And I'm obviously I don't want to get you know I'm on, I'm the leader of the team, and I play with Zubak and I play with Wifey, and I don't want Wifey to be jumping off no top of no boat, no water. So it's like you just hear like every like 15 minutes, I'm just drowning myself, bro. Salt water, like it's, I mean it's. It's a catastrophe. <laughs> you got to jump off boat if you lose? Every time. If you lose, you got to jump off boat. Mind you, boat is like 17 feet, bro. Like So, like, I get kind of stomach drop when I hit a certain point in the air. You know, like, it's it's a second to go down. Not, it's just not a jump. It's a jump. 17 feet up in the air? 
Yeah, man, shit is wild. So uh, that is a catastrophe. <laughs> you need nah, to start really, winning. Man, I'm, it's it's fucked up. Like my my energy's off. I I feel it. Yeah. I, I did, how do how do we get this out of our system? You want to you know? It's it, like I lose lose the Paul George and Cat, and I'm like, that's fuck. And then I lose to Paul George and his uncle. Like, <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. Then I, then me and wifey, we play Paul. You know, we play Cat and Jordan Woods, and we we lose to them. I mean, it's just belt to ass right now, man. Belt to ass. Damn, that is that's I I, I just hate that for us as as kind of a unit. But you're gonna get through this. You're gonna pull through. Just keep nah, it's playing. A bad day. Bad day. Sad day. Sad day. <laughs> it's a bad day. Bad what day. what other stuff have you been doing, or does this completely overshadow every part of the trip? I mean, everything, jumping off boats. I got this little thing called the, what is it called? It's fucking, you push a button, it goes underneath. It's like the, the, some dope ass shit. And we, we, we're swimming. I mean, we, we're living it up. You know, like the water's great. The weather is unbelievable. We got, we stand in this sick ass villa. You know, we, we're working out. You know, obviously everybody, you know, got their wives here. And girlfriend, so it's you know the love is in the air. It's a good vibe. You have chefs every morning. I mean, it's three sprinter vans. I mean, it's nothing less than extravagant. I mean, we, we everything's great. It's just I got two questions. How do you guys split up the bill for everything? Five ways. Five ways. On everything. Man, I'm talking. About, I'm wrong. I'm leaving. I'm leaving restaurants paying five hundred euro. We have lobsters and all type of shit, all type of shit. It's just wild, man. That's it. I love this way, splitting five bills. I'm the guy who got five, six friends. I got to pay for every motherfucking thing. So just splitting five ways. I, I like how this is going. Yeah, that is nice. These are affluent men that you're among. But then my other question yeah. is, how did you split up the rooms at the villa? Who got which pick of what room and everything? Obviously, I think it was the idea, you know, PG and um, his wife. So. Obviously, they get the biggest room, and every other room was kind of similar, the same size. You know, we split the the total amount of, for the villa and called a bar. Yeah, that's great that you could do it so democratically. Does anybody have alligator arms when it comes to reaching for the check? No, no, no. It's been like, and then it's wild. Everybody just pulled out Amex. It's too much. Oh wait, we might it's have a, the fact that everybody got the Amex is how it should be. Big ballers. Yeah. Then wifey sitting over there, like everybody got the little, you know, silver A Max and wifey, she just sitting over there with the black motherfucker. Oh, damn. That's such a flex. <laughs> motherfucker, we ain't even using that motherfucker. She just over there, just black car. Just and she she's 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 the motherfucker that like carries clear bag, clear purse with just the black car, the lip gloss and like. That's she's gotta be clear. That's such a flex. That's just such a way to uh, big ball. It make me it probably makes you love her more. Yeah. All right, let's talk real quick about New Amsterdam Vodka. New Amsterdam Vodka, born from an uncompromising passion for great vodka. Whether you're in New York City or Mykonos, you're going to be enjoying some delicious New Amsterdam Vodka because their commitment to excellence has enabled them to produce an American vodka of superb taste and unparalleled smoothness, liquid rated 93 points, five times distilled and three times filtered. And I'm pretty sure... Amsterdam, listen... Yeah. I had some new Amsterdam vodka while I was here in Mykonos. Oh, really? Listen, I, I had to. I had to try it. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm I'm, I'm, I, I'm around. Love once I get to drink a little bit. Wrong when I tell you it had me walking in access, my boy. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for my left hand. It's attached to my arm, if you know what I mean, wrong. <laughs> Dude, I'll be careful drinking that new Amsterdam vodka. Because it's so good. If it was a if it was a basketball player, it would have led the league in scoring multiple times. And that's why it's the official vodka of Barstool Sports. And you can find your wins with new Amsterdam vodka. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Drink, drink, drink responsibly. Drink responsibly, always. And drink new Amsterdam. So speaking of greatness, we're joined by some unadulterated greatness right now. This is a guy who's danced among the greats of the all-time in the NBA. All-star games, all-NBA teams, you couldn't hold them without having this man on. A most improved player, sure, but a two-time scoring champion. 
You might know him from the Raptors, from the the Magic. You might know him from his days in Houston, but he only needs two syllables to be introduced. It's the one, it's the only T-Mac. Welcome to the Pat Bev Pod. Appreciate it, brother. Nice entry. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> what did I leave out? What did I, what am I missing? I know you know all your accolades. <laughs> nice entry. It's funny. <laughs> That's a good intro. <laughs> yes. Hey, Mac, I got a quick question. I got a quick answer. If you played in today's league right now, that $300 million that somebody just got, would you be able to get that? Come on. Come on, man. Of course. I you know. know I have to ask. I have to. Yeah. I have to. Yeah, I would, I would like to think so. See, I got the max a few times in my day. Yeah, like, I agree. I agree. The way that everything's changing with the uh, salaries are just absolutely exploding. We're seeing 300. We're probably going to see 400 and 500 soon. This is just happening at such a quick rate. You ever just think, man, I wish I was born like two decades later. Yeah, I had that conversation with my mom. You know what I mean? Like she had me too early. She could have she could have waited been celibate all them years, probably since she, since she was 30 instead of 18. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hundred million dollars difference for you, at least. <laughs> 200 million, you ask me. What do you mean? Mm. I think my first max was 92. For Damn. seven years. Damn, seven years. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was my max. Yeah, that's Nine, a had it. I ain't mad at him, man. Get it. Get yeah, the, it why you can't. the way it's structured now, players can get into a contract and get out and, and get into that next contract so much sooner. And I think that that's one of the main benefits, not only the money, but the way that you can just turn over these contracts. These seven-year deals are a thing of the past. That's another benefit of, that these new guys have. For sure. I mean, shorter terms, a lot more money. And um, you're able to re up after what three or four years and, and sign another one. You of it, you know what I mean. But when you look at it, though, it is top heavy. You know what I mean. Um, you got a few guys making a lot of a lot of money, but then those mid level guys, those are the guys that's getting short change because they signing you know minimum deals when they are mid level that should be making. 10 to, to $12 million. These guys are signing $2 million deals. Yeah, I just I just signed that $2 million motherfucking dollar deal. I feel what you mean. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> that bear ain't no $2 million player. Shit crazy, but it's part of it. You feel me? You got to adjust to the hustle. Got to adjust to it. Yeah, man, that's the CBA that y'all agreed to. Yeah, yeah. I should have been at those meetings, Matt. I should have been at those <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I know we got a bunch of questions for you, Mac. Hey, Ron, stop being scared. Ask him the questions, bro. I'm not scared at all. I want to start at the beginning, if that's cool with you, because the way you started was on the on, on the Toronto Raptors, but you weren't the T-Mac that we saw that scoring, you know, 62 points. We did, It wasn't the T-Mac that's leading the league in scoring. We were seeing a T-Mac who couldn't really get on the court, and you've talked about it before, that it affected your mentality at the time. You were ready to play. Your coach wasn't ready to put you in, and you were sleeping for 20 hours a day. You can we classify that as depression? Do you do you feel like you were actually depressed when you were going through that period? Oh, not at all. Not at all. It was a it was an 18-year-old still growing, right? It was an 18-year-old that moved to a, a country that I knew nothing about, a city I knew nothing about in Toronto. Um, I'm a Florida boy, man. You know what I mean? So moving from Florida to Toronto. The currency is different. The whole culture is different. Like, you know, I'm dealing with driving in snow now at 18. Like, I've never driven in snow. So all these things, you know what I mean, is is a culture shock to me that I have to adapt to. Um, so as an 18 year old, I'm still growing. So I'm sleeping. I don't want to go outside because it's 10 degrees outside. <laughs> so mm. 
I can't do too much in my in my condo that I'm staying in, but sleep and grow. And I, I think I grew probably two inches um, from the time that I was in Toronto. The time I got into the league and I left Toronto, I think I grew like two or three inches. Damn. That changes everything, honestly. That's like basically you jump into a different position at two to, uh, two inches of growth. But we look at Toronto now and we see the six. We see it's Drake's country. We see uh, the championship that they won. But when you got to Toronto in 1997, what was the culture like of that city? Was it the Toronto we know today? No, no, not even close. It was it was really a hockey city. You know what I mean? The uh, The hockey team was the most popular thing there. Uh, Blue Jays, I think, won a, a World Series or played for the World Series early 95 or 94. Somewhere around there, I think the Blue Jays played for a World Series. But other than that, it was just hockey town, man. I remember, you know, the 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 one time that I felt like the fans were into basketball is when we played the Bulls. Bulls came to town. You know, we played into, inside the Sky Dome where the baseball team plays. So, it's huge. Bulls came to town. It was like 35,000 people that mm-hmm. showed up to the game. And that's when, you know, you could feel that, you know, I, this is basketball energy in here. But prior to that, it was like, you know, you do something spectacular out there and it was crickets. <laughs> like, they didn't really understand. But my second year, that's when it started to grow a little bit more. We got a new arena. We got Vince Carter. So when he came to town, I mean, it electrified a whole freaking city, man. And, and and that's when I think things started to turn in terms of, you know, the fans gravitating towards basketball and not so much hockey. And you see a different culture that happened because you look at the young NBA players now. There's a lot of Canadian dudes. There's a lot of guys. I mean, Jamal Murray just won a championship. Shea, Shaden Sharp. Like, you could go on. There's a ton of young guys that are talented. How much of that germination of new talent, you think, came from the fact that you and Vince Carter were in Toronto? There's no doubt. I mean, you, you know, you, you imitate what you're able to, to see up close and personal. And we were in that city. And I think we had an imprint on a lot of those kids when they were younger to be what they are today. And uh, I, I think we were the inspiration. And as you see, in essence, you know, there's a lot of Canadians that are in the league today that are really freaking good. I got a, I got a tough one for you today. Who wins one on one, you or your cousin Vince Carter? And if so, how would you play him? How would you come at him in the game? Today, today, me being, being forty eight. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a game. Oh, um, I think both of us is in shape. It's who needs going to give out him? Give out on him first. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would I wouldn't dare play anybody at 44 at, at, in one on one. I'm a I, my biggest my biggest scare, and that's why I don't play basketball no more. I can't afford to tear my Achilles, bro. I, I can't afford it. I, I got too much going on in my life, and I don't. I hear the recovery is brutal, and I ain't got time for that. So he can win. He can have it. <laughs> I don't want no. Did, did, y'all, did y'all ever play when y'all was younger? No, we didn't. We didn't know it. We, we didn't know. We didn't know we were cousins when we were younger. I didn't find out he was my cousin <laughs> until I was a freaking senior in high school. And we, and, and prior to that, and because I moved to North Carolina and we were playing, I used to go to the Tar Heels and play pickup with them. I used his locker, not knowing we were cousins. And, but prior to that, I played on the junior team, Florida team. He played on the senior team, Florida. So I played before him and I used to sit in the stands and watch him play after my games, not knowing we were related until after one time I, I moved to North Carolina and I was playing pickup. I told him I was leaving for the weekend, going to a family reunion. He said something about, uh, oh yeah, my family is having something like that too. So I ended up calling him from the family reunion because my grandmother and his grandmother was sitting at the table talking. And that's how we found out we was cousins. 
Damn. Wow. Yeah. It was just it's crazy how it happened. Didn't even know. So no, we didn't play pickup uh one oh I mean one oh one when we were younger at all. Yeah, people make it but people kind of assume that since you guys were cousins, our cousins, that you grew up and were, you know, running around the same backyards, getting into the same shit with each other. But it was a later onset cousin bond that you guys had. Yeah, yeah. So he grew up in Daytona Beach, whereas I grew up closer to like Orlando, in between Orlando and Tampa, which I'm probably hour and a half away from him, two hours. Uh, so we we never ever played or did anything in our childhood together. When you look back at the Toronto teams that you guys were on together, do you ever have a wish that they would have found a way? to put you guys in the same roster to unleash you guys similarly? Or do you think that your play styles were too similar to one another that it, it wouldn't have worked? I don't think our playing styles had anything to do with, you know, me leaving Toronto. It was, it was way bigger than that. Um, it had nothing doing with our, our play styles couldn't coexist because they did. Uh, it had nothing to do with I couldn't grow being under Vince Carter. It had nothing to do with that. This was all internal stuff that was going on, as well as I'm 20 years old. I'm from the Orlando area. I have an opportunity to go and play for my home team that I grew up watching. My favorite mm -hmm. player, you know, Penny Hardaway, who I idolized and watched, Shaq, who I grew up watching. Like, I'm 30 minutes away from. This arena where I used to drive by, you know what I'm saying, often, and used to see myself playing this, in this arena in that uniform. That's that's what they was fighting up against. It had nothing to do with our playing styles that we couldn't coexist. Nothing. And that ta the, the taxes down in Florida? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he kept it all. <laughs> and, it, and, oh. and the taxes. Toronto, my goodness. Jeez, they get you out there. They do? They get you out there for sure. Very high. Hey, you, think, you think the way you play, right, the way you play, uh, a lot of coaches gave you the ball, elbow sets, mid post, um, a lot of isos, a lot of, okay, we need a bucket, T-Mac. You think that that play is uh, – Helps win championships during that time? Uh, let me see. I, I think you need much more than that because at that time you still had back-to-the-basket players. You had Tim Duncan. You had Shaq, right? Um, I can't think of other guys, but you had more guys that played with their backs so as a basket to help carry you to that championship. Now, at the end of the day, you mm -hmm. need that coach. You need that D-Wade to get you up in those crunch time situations. When it's when it's go time, yeah, I need D-Wade or I need Kobe, you know what I'm saying? Or I need a KD to get me a bucket. That's what it boils down to. But, you know, you, you definitely needed the, the Shaqs and the Tim Duncans and those dudes that were great with their back towards the basket. Mm. You mentioned Kobe, and you have one of the luxuries of playing against – Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron. And I'm not going to try and say who's better among these two or do anything to divide them. I want to know from you what similarities those three guys have. Is there a through thread in their greatness between the three of them? It's their minds. It's just their minds, right, that, that really separates them. They're, they're willing to do a little bit more than everybody else. They're willing to go that extra mile. And they're very cerebral basketball players. These guys are smart basketball players, right? But I think there's an obsession with all of them to be great. Yeah, you mm. need that. You 100% need that. And then you get the things that come with it. You know, you get the big contracts and then you get those shoes. My, my boy Mike, a producer of this show, was talking about how when we went to our freshman year orientation of high school, everybody was in those T Max. Mike oh, said he God. went home. Mike, he said he went home and told his mom, like, I need the T Max. 
<laughs> I saw this dude have the T Max. Uh, how how um, how involved were you with that shoe, and how much did you see that shoe having an impact on people? I saw a lot, man, because I, I know the impact that you know seeing my favorite player with his own shoes and I exp- inspired me to want mine. I remember, you know, back in my days, man, I used to go East Bay. And I used to scroll through that East Bay book and I used to find my favorite pennies, get the pennies, COD, cash on delivery, baby. <laughs> I used to order every penny that came out. I bought them. You know what I mean? I found some way to, to, to scrabble up some money and buy my pennies. But, you know, I think, you know, having that inspiration, man, it just it, it does something to you. You know what I mean? It, it just it lights a fire under you. It, it it wants you to be in that position. And that's what I wanted. Um, so the first time I seen someone wear my shoes, man, I was like, you know, I, I felt proud of where I've been and what I was really able to accomplish. And I wanted to keep more. It just really gave me fuel to keep going and wanting more. And uh, being involved in that process, I'm, I'm not really creative thinker on stuff like that, on sneakers and and taking looking at cars and looking at a a house or looking at certain objects and putting that into shoes i'm not that that creative of a thinker i don't know how the hell they do that but i told my designers look man just create a few options for me and i'll hand pick of what i like and then we'll go from there but for me to you know come off the top or take certain you know objects from certain things and add into my shoes i just didn't i didn't have that in me are you one of the guys that's like <clears throat> you have some of these old retired guys and they um <laughs> they, talk, they, they talk about they talk about legacy and they talk about uh if uh if I would have won a ring, you gotta put me up with this guy. You think winning championships, like you not winning championships or a guy like Paul Pierce winning championships, you think like the legacy is different because of championships or is that just skill? No, no, no. I, I think my, if I had won a championship, I think my legacy would be a lot. Uh, I think it would be different. I don't know how much of a difference because I mean, I, I'm pretty, I'm internationally known. I'm glo- I'm globally known. I sell shoes on a global level. Um, I have a brand on a global level, but I think winning a championship probably would have elevated me in the conversation of some of the guys that have won that championship. Right. Um, in, in terms of being in that class, talent level, I'm in the class regardless. I don't care what anybody says that on, on a talent level. But I think from a career you know, perspective, yeah, I think I would have been in, that, in some of those conversations. And I think that elevates your... Um, your, your career and your brand as well of winning the championship, depending on who you are as that player, though. I, I Like, a lot of people don't know your game. Like, a lot of people say, like, oh, yeah, man, I watch T-Mac all the time. And, like, a lot of people don't know your game. Like, 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 like the ball handling, like, you had at that size, no one in the NBA had at that time. And I don't think, like, like people really understand, like, oh, man, well, you, like, you feel like if if you win a championship, I in my opinion, and I know you feel me, people look at me, in my opinion, I feel like if you won a championship, I I feel like you're in that conversation with Kobe. Like 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 without a doubt. Like without a doubt. What like and if someone says different, I I like I'm I'm a fight to the end of the bone. Like y'all y'all don't you, know basketball. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't you can't really say different because at, at a time, I mean, that was a conversation of who was the best players in the league. It was it was me and Kobe of a barbershop talking around the league. You know, real hoopers, real basketball people know. You know what I'm saying? But it's in today's society and sports, you get defined by winning championships. Whereas everybody is not lucky enough to be in those situations. You look at you know, some of the greats that have come through this game. I mean, uh, there's a lot of great players. They just wasn't lucky enough. Like, you, you look at, and I'm not saying Magic Johnson was lucky, but Magic Johnson played with a lot of freaking Hall of Famers. I'm not saying Larry Bird is lucky. 
He played with a lot of Hall of Famers, right? Jordan wasn't so lucky of playing with a lot of Hall of Famers. He just had a great sidekick in Scottie Pippen. But if you look at Jordan before Scottie Pippen became, became Scottie Pippen, Jordan was just a great individual player. Like Jordan wasn't getting out of the first round or going deep into the playoffs before Scottie Pippen became Scottie Pippen. So you have to have talent to win championship, and everybody is just not blessed to play with a, cha- a championship organization that's willing to put that type of talent around you to go for a championship. Every organization is not trying to win a championship in the NBA. Mm. Mm. That's facts, Ron. Talk more about that. What do you mean? What are they trying to do? Just break even, make money? Of course. This is, yes. Uh, this this is a, in some, in, in, for some of these owners, the NBA might just be a hobby gig for them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, just to say they own an NBA team, it's just a hobby gig for them. They made their money somewhere else. But, hey, let me go purchase an NBA team and be an NBA owner. Like, bro. If you look at some of the teams that have not even competed or made the playoffs in 15 to 20 years, you try to tell me they're trying to win a championship. If they are, they need to fire everybody in this in their office if they're trying to win a championship and they haven't made the playoffs for 15 to 20 years. Come on, man. And there's some teams that have an owner that owns a hockey team and also owns a football team. It's not going to be all one concerted effort to have all like you, 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 everybody can't win. But so they're probably trying to diversify their portfolio, have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's frustrating as a fan, too. As long as my bottom line is not affected, I don't care what my team is doing. They're not going to tell you that. If my bottom line isn't affected, and I'm making money owning a team, and we haven't made the playoffs in 10 years, I'm on my 100 and 200 foot yacht with my stogie, my cone yacht, and living life. When you guys talk about this, I can't help but think about Michael Jordan. Do you think, I mean, Michael Jordan owned the, the uh, Bobcats for, for a long time. You know, he, he owned these teams. Do you think that he falls in the same category of a guy who just was happy to have a team? I, I really think they, who, the guys that were over drafting free agency, like making decisions in management, I think they were just over the head and really didn't know how to evaluate talent. That's what I think. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it's, it's so many great players that have come through in, in Jordan's, you know, era of being an owner of the Bobcats that have been great players that could have changed that, that franchise around, but they didn't, they passed or overlooked certain players. They passed or overlooked everybody. That team should have been way better than what it was. Absolutely. Straight up. Straight Absolutely. up. Straight up. And, that's, and that's like, if that's anybody else, they make fun of that person. They make fun of that owner. Yeah. Like, if we being real. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like that's the that's the bottom line. You you you're in this league as players, you produce, you get paid. And it's the same thing with owners. You know what I'm saying? Like it's no way. It's no way. I thought that I thought that team should have been way better. Like, like they, they have the facilities, they have the area, they have the crowd, they have the weather, they have the money. Like they should have been way better than what they were. Management, way bro. Better. Just they didn't have the, the the right people in charge of evaluating and making decisions as far as talent. That's just what it boils down. I, I got a I got a weird one for you. I got a weird one. I don't know how much you know this, T Mac, but about how people see you online. But there's a group of commu- uh, uh, there's a community of people online that are obsessed with a vein that you have in your right shoulder, dude. I don't know <laughs> if you even know about this vein, but it's guys talking online being like, hey, I was in the gym trying to get do anything to try and get that shoulder vein popping. What is the story behind that vein? And why are you the only human being that has it? You know what, man? It was it was a thing in my playing career where I'm at the free throw line shooting free throws in this this vein you know, is on my right arm just going down. I, I I don't know the obsession about it. I don't know what that's about. But uh, I've, I've heard people talk about it online. Yes, I have. 
how did you get it? How do you get this vein? Was it just random or something you cultivated? It's just extra blood flowing in that area, man. You know, this is my bionic arm, bro. You know what I'm saying? This is <laughs> the, the blood got to be pumping through. I've been a lot of shots up, man. <laughs> I, arm, bro. I got I got to keep it flowing. So when you see that, that vein in there, man, that means it's automatic tonight. <laughs> yeah. Folks, let's take a second and talk about Express. Express quality, versatility. I'm down in Montauk this last weekend, anniversary with wifey. I'm head to toe express. I had the express pants on, the express shirt. It was like a knit collar shirt. I was looking so damn crispy. They were asking me to go into every single club bar, anything that, that, that was out there in Montauk, just because the look, the outfits, and express has you covered all summer. Best shirts, tees, polos in the game, comfy suits for wedding season, the slacks, the chinos, the trousers, the jeans. I can't stop talking about Express. Pat, I know that it's been part of your repertoire for quite some time. You better be enjoying that Express because I know I am. No, 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 no. I always enjoy Express. And, and people don't understand, Express is very underrated in the summertime. Yes. You can get you a cool summer fit. The wind hit it. You don't feel extra, like, dressy, but you feel dressed up enough where you're not disrespectful, man. Y'all shop Express, man. It's been it's been, not, it's been in my life for a long time, I'll say that. You feel good. You look good. You look modern. You look current. They have the fits. They have the clothing. It's going to feel like a nice contemporary fit is supposed to. And they're also always running awesome sales. So I'm excited that we have the code PATBEV for 10% off your online order that you can use in addition to any deals that Express already has going on. Use code PATBEV, get 10% off, and look good while you're doing it with Express. We express, we express, express. And they'll express that stuff right to your door. Get your Express yeah. today. The uh, bar, bar. Bar. Hey, I got a question. And and, 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 and and I've been thinking about, like, the right questions to actually ask you. Like, because we are in front of greatness, and I don't think you should just come with just bullshit. So, like, obviously... You, 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 like you've been in the league, you've been around the league since you've been out. The demand trading and like the ability guys have to say, you know what, fuck it, I don't want to be here, or fuck it, I thought it was, it was this and they won it, or you know what, fuck it, man, get me up out of here. Like, question one, do you agree with that? Question two, if you do, would you would have done that in your early stages in your career? So it's really a loaded question because I take, I take my situation. When I was in Orlando, right, I signed a seven-year deal. <clears throat> I played four years in Orlando, but my four years was heavy on my body, right? I, I, I and, and that's because I thought I was going to play with Grant Hill. Grant Hill was out. I think our four years, we only played probably like 40-something games together, I think. So my four years, I'm sitting here battling in the Eastern Conference, and I'm getting frustrated by my third and fourth year, right? Because I feel like you traded away Mike Miller, who we know how his career ended up. He could have helped our team out a lot. You trade away one of the best leaders that I've been around and Daryl Armstrong was the energy and the heart and hustle of our team. So you trade away all these pieces and not really consulting with me and, and, and getting my opinion on, you know, the direction that we should be going. And that's y'all sitting here trying to, to tank and get a high school kid that I don't know about. I didn't know how great, Dwight how it was. You know what I'm saying? Had I known Dwight was going to turn out like Dwight turned out, shit, I probably would have stayed, but I enjoyed my time. I see she is with y'all. But I wasn't trying to be in a rebuilding stage after four years of going, you know, hard every single day and not really having a, a, another all-star on to me. So I had to, I, I needed to change. Is it, do I play that out? Am I wrong for Wanting a trade to get out of that situation when a team is is tanking to get another high school kid, and I'm in my seventh year trying to pursue of winning, and then I look at Dame's situation. You know, I'm not mad at Dame. 
I think he has like three or four years left on his deal. If anybody deserves to, you know, request a trade and they still have that amount of years left on that deal, it's Dane. I have no um, ill will towards that. I'm not mad at his decision. That man has given 11 solid, great years Mm -hmm. to Portland. Everything that you can imagine you want Mm -hmm. from a player. He's been a great ambassador on and off of basketball court. In the community, man, it's great. So him requesting a trade because he's done everything you asked him. He wants to win a championship before it's too late. He still has a few good years. Allow that man to go and pursue a championship while he still has those years. Now, the guys that's just trying to get out just to get out because they don't like their situation or, you know, they don't like a coach. Nah, that's bullshit. I ain't with that. Play, Play your joint out. You know what I mean? Play it out because you got some internal stuff going on with a, a, a coach or a player. Nah, that ain't that ain't the way to go. You got to play that out. Mm. When you look at the Dame situation, though, it seems like he's kind of in a Miami or bust mindset. Do you think players should be able to d- dictate specifically what team they go to? I think certain players should have that luxury. I do. And I think Dame should be one of those players that have that luxury to point where he wants to go. Now he has to understand, oh, you dang dollar, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't, you're, you're not about to get, if I'm Portland, I'm not about to trade you to a team and not really receive any great assets back to help us, you know, stay a, a competitive basketball club. I don't just want some some first round or second round picks back and, and don't get you know, no real talent back that can help me win now. I don't want that. Like, if I'm trading Dane back, I want great assets pieces that can help us, you know, stay a contending team. That makes sense. That makes a ton of sense. Um, When we look at your career, though, you are a guy that could finish with finesse, but you could also finish with power and you just pop on a highlight tape, you've dunked over a lot of a lot of fucking human beings in, in your career. Is there, <laughs> let's be honest, like you look at the highlight tape and it, it's pretty clear that that's what this man was doing. Was there, is there one that sticks out in your mind that felt better than all the rest? One dunk that you, the, the feeling afterwards was more triumphant than the rest of the people that you dunked on? Uh... Yeah, uh, <laughs> my old teammate Matumbo. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> he was he was playing for Philly. He was playing for Philly, um, and we had some run ins um, in our in our days being an all star all star weekend and stuff like that. And you know, we sit in the locker room, we talk, and he, you know, talk about you ain't never dunked on me, this and that. You ain't never gonna dunk on me. Um, we were in Orlando. And I was on the right side, got the ball, went down the middle, left hand, like crow hot on two, took off with two hands and dunked on him real hard. And when I tell you I flushed on deep, bro, hard as shit with two hands, and I let him know, you know what I mean? I let him know the next time I see him, not during the game, but the next time I see him, that I dunked on his ass hard. Like, I got it. I got you. And then we. <laughs> We became teammates like a year or two later. So, you know, we had that conversation. And and Deke sometimes has, you know, what is it when you forget? Is it an amnesia? Amnesia. Yeah. He he, he act like I ain't never dunked on his ass. That's how he try to act when we bring it up. You got to show him a painting of it. And listen, but speaking on bigs, right? And and, and I know you sit back and I know like you're you're a student still. Like you don't even play and I know you're a student of the game. Just being around you like. Obviously, you got your one-on-one turn, and we go dive in that later. But, like, when you hear about these dudes, right, and, and I like to watch basketball. I like to watch centers. And I like to watch, e- like, each possession, like, each position. When you hear about these guys mentioning centers, and they do not mention Yao Ming, and I don't think people understand how nice Yao Ming is and really was back then. Rome, the man had 83 from the field. The man had hit the midi. The man hit the tray ball. He had handle. He will dime you. He was seven six. Free throws. And he will dunk you. Yeah, him nah, against Shaq was, was yeah. No one talks about him. No one talks like top 
four, top five, app, like no one talks about him at all. It's the yeah, craziest it's, thing. It's because, you know, that the longevity, not winning, you know what I mean? That plays a part into it. But Yao was complete, man. Yao was offensively, like he was he was one of the most skilled players in his in his time. Left hand, right hand jump up. He shoot the mid range, shoot eighty five from the line. Hell, he even get a transition once a couple times in, in a and make a the right basketball play. You know, handling the rock. So he was tough, man. He he was real tough. It, it just you know being around him, dog. You just couldn't imagine like why are you so big, bro. I used to walk in the locker room and just look at this man like I, I could not get over how big this dude is. His legs, his calves. Man, his, at, like I was so freaking big, but he uh, offensively, man, he was complete, bro. He had it all. Mm. I think that man, I, I think that the language barrier, I think, in some ways, hurt the way that people uh, perceived him, which is super unfortunate. But was there any times when he was like just a teammate, another member, another another one of the guys? Like, did Yao ever do anything goofy? What? Yao, listen, Yao had a great sense of humor, bro. And Yao, he, man, we used to have, like, if if we played a game and we stayed over in that city, like, we'll go and hang out. Yao would be with us. We'll have a great time. Like, Yao was a great teammate. He was one of the guys. Love that. That's fire. Love that. Love that, man. Shout out to Yao Ming, man. Yeah, shout out to Yao, man. Shout out to Yao, bro. I don't care nobody say, bro, he top five, top six. Best center in the league, to, in my book, for sure, for sure. And when you talk to greats about him, you talk to Shaq about him, Shaq could tell you, like, man, I had problems with y'all. Yeah, y'all yeah, gave me real problems. Yeah, at the end of the day, we as basketball players, I mean, you, you, you're going to have you, you're gonna have people that, you know, have their favorites, especially with the media and, and, and side with certain dudes and, and talk about certain dudes. But... As, as a player, the only thing really matters is that you gain the respect of your peers. Like, when you have respect from your peers, all the outside noise, the fans, the media, and talking all that shit that they do, man, who gives a fuck, bro? Who cares? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because them the guys that had to deal with me on a nightly basis. I, no. I, I, I just, you know, it, it's too much of motherfuckers that have a voice and, and, and don't know or can't play shit about you know, can't do shit with the, with the basketball in their hands. Like, shut the fuck up. You mm-hmm. know what you're talking about. When you when you when you listen to this, like, to the media, and and you you still around the game, you've never really tried to like explore that media outlet. And I and like I've been around you. Like, it's been pretty opportunities. You can be like, okay, be on ESPN. Like, you've never been the one that's been like, and you never say a lot. Like, like you feel me? Like, you never like get on TV and say a lot. Like. When you hear this dumbass shit when people talk about basketball, like, I know as a hooper, it got to, like, man, come on, I don't want to hear Like, you feel me? So, like, break that down to me. Like, not, like, having a brain, but not just going on TV and just saying some shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I just, I, I, I know, and, and, and are you talking about, are you talking about players? Or are you talking, where, 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 where are you going I'm with saying, this? like, like how me and you, like how me and you, we'll be at ESPN, we'll kick the shit, we'll talk about basketball, and talk, and it'd be so fast, like we'll get right to it, ba 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 ba. But like, you've never been the one to be like, you know what? Let me take this ESPN job and and, mm. and, and talk about the game, or let me talk, take this TNT job and and, and be it, like, you've never been one of those. Like, you feel me? Yeah, I would, I would never be that, Pat. I just, you know, I, I think. When I did do ESPN, it was a great format that I had with Rachel Nichols, and, and, and you know I'm glad I did that. But it ain't for me. It, it's not for me. Um, I know how hard the game is for us, right? And if 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 I'm gonna be me on TV, I gotta be me. I can't right. have no telling me, you know, what I need to say or I can't say this. I ain't with that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be authentic. I'm going to be me. I'm going to talk about what I see. And, it, and, and you know, certain times, certain things that I say people don't like. But I'm just being honest and I'm just giving my honest opinion. I don't want to be on TV and say some shit and then 
come back in that, the next segment and I got to apologize for something. What? Yes. Nah, I meant what I fucking said. I meant what I said. Why? I, I'm not going back in the pot. I ain't with that. So that's why I just, I, I stay away from, you know, a, a full-time gig on TV. I'll make an appearance here and there, but I'm not about to be a full-time, you know, analyst on, on basketball. Let's talk about this one-on-one turn. I got to talk about it. That shit was fire last year. I had some homies that tried, like, in Chicago that, that went to it, like, yo, Pat, he did that shit right. It was organized. It was competitive as fuck. It was fun. Like, he just talked about, man, it was lit in that. Like, Pat, it was lit. It was a lot of people. It was only basketball vibes. It was, like, explain that to people who don't know a lot about that. I know you from Chicago. When we went to Chicago last year for, for OBL, oh, my God. I can't wait till we go back, bro. The energy in that month was crazy. You know how Chicago <laughs> I'm talking about man, the dude, the Chicago Bulls was on there talking shit to each other. I mean, it, it, if you play pickup basketball in the hood, that's what it was. That energy was crazy. I mean, dudes was going at it, bro. But that's what I want to bring. This, this is a platform that we need. Like. One-on-one basketball is the true essence of the game, of the sport. So my platform, hopefully, is one that can can be global and and provide an opportunity for guys that, you know, like Jadika said, man, how come a brother up north better than Jordan that that ain't get that break? It's a lot of them dudes out there like that. It's Mm -hmm. millions of them. You know what I'm saying? It's only 450 of us every year in the league. It's thousands and millions of cats that leave college basketball and they looking for an opportunity, right? This platform provides them that opportunity. In fact, you probably played with some guys in your, in your, uh, your career that, you know what I mean? Was really freaking good, but because of the situation that they were put in, you got a couple stars and then, you know, they're a newcomer. These guys in practice is showing their, their ability, they're showing their skill set, just ain't the right situation for them. Every stop they go to, just ain't the right situation. They can hoop like a motherfucker, right? But they probably can't adapt to the system. They put in a role that they can't adapt to. And then in essence, you mentally get ejected. And you're like, damn, dog. You start questioning your ability. Am I good mm-hmm. enough? You know what I'm saying? So to have a platform one-on-one where you don't have to worry about a coach putting you in a role. You don't have to worry about, you know, somebody telling you, uh, just go sit in the corner or do it. Nah, this is all you. Come and show your ability, your talent <clears throat> of who you really are as a basketball player. It's a lot. I take like Kyrie. As great as Kyrie is, you put Kyrie in one-on-one, in a one-on-one uh, league, Man, watch the shit that Kyrie will be able to do, bro. Like, he ain't show ha- like half of the shit that he can do with his skill set, his ability in the NBA. You can't show, you know, that type of talent. You know what I'm saying? You got to be strategic in, in how you move on the, in the NBA circle. But outside of that, in one-on-one, where he's able to just, you know, take off all the chains and don't be tied down to nothing and, and, and relinquish all of that, it will be not, man. We'll see some shit like yo. <laughs> like, we already yeah. see shit with him. He already <laughs> crazy. He why? But to see in that setting, in that form, you know what I mean? Like, it's guys out there like that. You play with some dudes in your hood that's like they out there, bro. So OBL is a platform for these guys, man, to give them that opportunity, bro. And it and it should be that, you know, because everybody can't play in the NBA. So when you when you when you speak OBL, like what what it originally like started from? What would like you woke up right. one day and was like, fuck it, I'm gonna have a one tournament. So I got two, I got two boys, you know. And you um, look, wrong. And his son's cold as hell. Two stories. <laughs> Ron, no, no, I don't mean to cut you off, Mac. My bad, Mac. His sons, I come, I come do like a, a, e, a e has some some shit. I do a little interview, Mac that, okay, cool, T Mac that, okay, I gotta go. Mac that. Say that. I I'm 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 coming up to the interview, I'm looked down. Some kids, I'm, and these kids, tall as hell. Who the fuck are these kids? I'm talking about, when I say tall, wrong, I'm talking about, like, taller than me, wrong. This was like, and I'm in the league, this is like five, six years ago. Like, 
on the court shooting NBA threes, like long ass arms, like <laughs> can touch like calf ass arms. <laughs> Damn, like I look at Mac, like Mac, these your boys. Yeah, man, these motherfuckers getting big. Pat up Mac, these boys cold as hell. So I don't mean to cut you off, Mac. So, but his son's legit, though. On God, his son's legit. His son's legit. So, I, so the idea came, um, you know, with my boys. I was. This is when I was working for ESPN. Back and forth when uh, go to state and, and Cleveland was playing every year for the championship. And my sons are big fans of LeBron and Seth, and they knew I was going back and forth to these games. They didn't want to go now. They didn't ask me to go now one time. So I can sit home and I'm watching, you know, college basketball and watching the NBA. My boys ain't got time to be sitting down two and a half hours watching live sporting events. They just ain't with that shit. So I'll come home and I'll see, I look on the TV and it's YouTube and it's guys playing pickup basketball. My boys were sitting down watching this shit. I'm like, I'll just sit down and watch. So these dudes were traveling around from park to park and they were just playing pickup. They'd go to a city, you know, that city uh, partake in a, a pickup against these guys. And they were just doing that shit all over various cities. But what ended up happening was two of the guys are getting to talking shit and they get to playing one-on-one basketball. So everybody moves out the way and these dudes just going one-on-one. I was like, damn. So I'm, I'm looking at the energy that's around this. I'm like, hold up. It's something here, bro. You know what I mean? And then my boys, I got my own AU program. So my boys after practice, they always want to play king of the court. Always after practice, they play king of the court. So it's a lot of one-on-one information that I'm processing. I also know there's underground leagues out here that, you know, you got somebody from your hood that got big bank and then it's a dude from the hood that can hoop. He going to take him across town because there's another dude that's backed by somebody that got big bank and they talking shit on social media. And then we breaking bread. That's 2,000 uh, of 10,000 in the middle that we going to play for. That That's in our hood. You know what I'm saying? I know about this. I man, I, I got to create this platform, bro, because it's, it's, it's too big. It's, it's, it's the perfect timing for this. And that's how I, where I got my information from and just created this platform, man. And you know what I mean? It's just, it, it's, it needed to be done, bro. It, Cause it, there's one, on, there's parts all over the country. There's one-on-one being played all over the country. There's one-on-one being played in China. There's one-on-one being played in Australia. There's one-on-one being all over the world, but there's not a platform that these guys can really identify to make them into superstars. And I believe these guys deserve to be superstars. Look at UFC. These mm. fighters, mm. they, they, they had their own background, where they went to college and whatever they did before that, we don't even know. But what we do know, when they got put on that UFC platform and started whooping people ass, they became household names and superstars. We can't do that for these guys in one-on-one basketball. It's the same concept. Mm. It's the platform. It ain't the players. The players ain't going to change. It's the platform. That's what it is. I became told name of high school, ABCD. It was a platform. Mm. No one knew who the hell I was. I was the same player in Florida, same player. I went on ABCD platform. The whole country knew who I was. It's mm. a platform. OBL is a platform for these hoopers. I want to create superstars, Fat Bev. That's gang. That's gang. Oh, God. I felt that in my bones. That's cold. And that's a lot of NBA players ain't doing that neither, Matt. Bro, I this is my this is my way of giving back to the game of basketball, to the basketball community. You know what I mean? This not, is, that's hard. And I think that when you look at other sports like swimming, there's like 20 different swimming events, track and field. You could run a sprint or you could run a marathon. Why is there not room for five on five basketball and one on one basketball at the highest ages? Let's take it even deeper for you. So we talk about the GOAT of basketball, right? We talk about Michael Jordan. We talk about Bron. I always talk about Kobe in that conversation as well. But take the best player. Who? I'm going to ask you. What's your name, bro? Ron. Oh, what is it? Ron, like Tyrone without the tie. Ron. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> <Tony> Ron. <laughs> 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 hey, 
Go, so, Tyro. <laughs> Go ahead. Who's the best player in today's game? Uh, what would you say? I say uh, Steph. You say Steph. Now, if I ask you this, would Steph be the best one-on-one player in today's game? No. Right. So that so, so right. This is why when I talk, when you talk about the goat of basketball, yeah, you the go, you you the best player in five on five setting. You could be the goat in five on five setting. But how you the best basketball player if another man is playing you one on one and he beats you? I want to talk about and create and discover who's the greatest, the world greatest basketball player. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to discover. Right, because me, it's me versus you. If I, if you're better than me at five on five, cool. But if I can whoop your ass at one on one, <laughs> what is that gonna do for me? <laughs> that, I'm crowned. I'm crowning as the the world's greatest one on one basketball player. Damn, That's I love I'm- it. And people can see more too because you have a a. In a Bonded by Ball, it's called a four-part docu-series that's chronicling the inaugural season of the Ones Basketball League, the OBL. Yeah, so we're doing we're doing a uh so last year I partnered with Sh- Showtime uh to docu, I mean document everything. I, I had cameras everywhere for OBL. And we had this partnership with with Showtime to uh put together a four-part series that we're going to highlight our players through the eyes of, of T-Mac and just really, you know, bring you aware of the rest of, you know, what one-on-one basketball is and who these players are and really, you know, give them the platform and a name, make a name for themselves um, and tell their stories. I think it's very important these guys that you don't know about, but you should know about them because they have – a very unique skill set that I think we all as basketball fans can appreciate in one-on-one basketball. Hey, when when can when can we see that drop, T Mac? It's it's dropping this Friday, bro. Uh oh. Paramount time. Yeah, it's dropping this Friday. For sure. Now they did a they did a great job, man. I think y'all really like it. Uh, you appreciate what we put together and you know, hopefully we can get y'all out to check out some games next year. Say that be fine. That'll be fine. A couple more, a couple food. more quick hitters before we get out of here. A couple more quick hitters for you. Um, the story about Gilbert Arenas say, saying that you uh, there was a photo shoot and it was you and Tim Duncan and you said five photos and you literally counted the five snaps of the shutter. How, how true is that story? Hey man, listen. <laughs> I just don't like people to waste my time. That's all. You know what I mean? There's no need to take 150 photos when you just, you know, you're only going to use three or four of them anyway. Just get these good snaps and let's get out of here, bro. Don't waste our time. We don't, we don't have to take all these photos. I, that's all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> okay. So uh, in, uh, it, you, you played in San Antonio for a little bit. What's it like playing with Pop? And how angry are you at Ray Allen for that shot that he hit in that corner? Uh, playing for Pop was, was great. Just really to get the opportunity to be around greatness for the few months that I was there. Um, just being around a, a, a true um True professionals, classy organization that does it the right way and is about winning from from the top down. Uh, wasn't mad at all. Ray Allen did what he was supposed to do. Uh, even if San Antonio would have won that championship, you know, it, it wouldn't have moved me either way. You know, we talked about this earlier. Um, when if winning a championship really, you know, enhances your career, for me, it, it wouldn't did. I don't think it would have did anything because I'm a player that's about the journey. I, I want to go on the journey with my team. I didn't go on the journey with them. Mm. Mm. Really participate with them. So it was a great experience, but I, I shout out to Ray Allen for hitting a tough shot, man. And I just read some uh, article where they were saying that it should have been called as travel. And I think Rick Barry um, said it should have been a travel on his part. Get the fuck out of here, Rick Barry. Talking about a travel. I don't want no goddamn travel. Even if it was, that was a hell of a shot, man. You don't know. Oh, God, that was a hell of a shot. Can't call it travel <laughs> there, bro. That would be crazy. <laughs> about traveling, man. When you, when, you, when you look at the NBA now, 
and they have all these. They have the play in game. They just they just they, they we've been having the last couple of years, and we have this new um, in season tournament game. You like that vibe? It's going to take some time for the the new tournament, uh, the ter- in season tournament, to grow me because I still don't have all of the. Um, I really haven't grasped on how all of that works, but the play-in, I love the play-in. I love, like like last year, the play-in was so fun to watch. It kind of gives like that March Madness feels a little bit, you know what I mean? That's why I I enjoy, you know, that type of uh, format. I love watching March Madness. I love it. I I don't miss um, a a game. I don't miss a, a year when March Madness is going on. Like, I would cut out everything to sit home and got three or four monitors on. I'm watching these goddamn games. I I just love it. Um, And I love that feeling of the playing game. So it's going to take some time for me to really grasp on what this this tournament is. But that was my last one, Mac. Like I've always said, you've never been a bitter vet. I've never been an all-star, superstar in my career. Real, you gave me the up and honest respect since day one, since day one, since day one. Knew, didn't know me from a can of paint since day one. I grew up in Chicago watching you at attack, come in with that big ass bodyguard. I, man, who the fuck with that big <laughs> ass backpack? I mean, who the fuck is that? Man, that's T Mac, man. I said, damn, cut off sleeve, bro. He in the shot working out. I, this shit crazy. So, like, to be a kid, like, sneaking in that gym, you feel me, to see y'all hoop, to like, Anytime I see you, show me all love, Mac. You know, I appreciate you, bro, from, from way deep shit. Appreciate you, guy. On some real shit, Pat, I, uh, you know, I mean, to the level that I reached, you know, it was through because I had the talent. And, you know, I worked my ass off to get there. But when you look at someone as yourself, like, I know what you did in high school. You know what I mean? Like you, I, I know the shit you did in high school. You was a dog in high school. You was scoring in high school. But to shift your game, right, and to be able to, you know, maintain and, and you know, do what you did in the NBA, not being the player that you was in, in, in high school, like to shift that, that's tough, bro. I got to commend you on that. You know what I mean? I appreciate that. Certain certain guys have that that ability to do that, and that that comes from here. You know what I'm saying? Being able to make that shift, make that to be able to adapt and and do what really is going to help you maintain a great NBA career mm-hmm. instead of pouting and and sticking to your guns and sticking to what you did in high school of being a scorer, not letting that affect your play affect your career, you shifted that and made a hell of a career out of, out of you know, what you became and making that shift. That's very, very tough, bro. So I commend you. And you really, as um, I'm sure you inspired a lot of people out there because of the road that you had to take, the path you take to, to get to where you at. So kudos and shout out to you, man, for, you know, the career that you put together. There's nothing short of spectacular. And, you know, hopefully... You know, you have many more years to go. And, uh, you know, we, get, we need to get you to that mid-level. That, that bullshit. <laughs> <man. laughs> we got to get you on the PA then, Mac. We got to get your ass on the PA then. <laughs> but, no, nah, we appreciate you, Mac. Everybody, T-Mac, thank you for yeah, blessing Yeah, come back pod, anytime, bro. bro. We'll talk about the baseball career next time. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, no. <laughs> No doubt. Shit, we could have got into it today if y'all wanted to. Shit, I ain't got no time. I know you're an all-star if you play baseball. I know that if you if you went a, 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 uh, and, and played in the major leagues, dude, I know you'd be an all-star. It's my first love, man. You got a 6'8 six, a six, dude slinging that thing on the mound. You know, shit, I was throwing 80-something in high school, bro. And, and with, you know, the, the, the teaching and everything that's going on today, shit, I probably would have ramped that up to about 95, 96. That's fire. Yeah, Randy yeah. Johnson vibes. Just it's call so himself. much shit. Like, it's so much shit. I've learned this part. I did not know about this man. Like, this, yeah. this and that's the like, this why it's perfect. Cause you like to get informed. Yeah, it's perfect. So my last year playing baseball was my junior in high school. And really it was like 
it was slotted because I had I started having arm problems in high school, so I didn't really pitch a lot. So my last year playing was my junior year. My next time playing organized baseball was 2014 in a minor league for independent. And I was out there throwing like 87, 88. That's a long span from junior year, which was 1995. Wow. Wow. 19 years. With Cage, too. He was striking dudes out. No, it, it was it was it was fun, man. I'm glad I got an opportunity to uh, to really, you know, empty that tank because I was trying to find a way. If, in, even in my early years of playing in the NBA, I was trying to find a way to play baseball. Timing just didn't work. Damn, that's fire! That's fire as hell. Yeah, this is an well, we athlete. That's where that that that's where that vein comes into play, man. <laughs> he could he throw yeah, that thing. Chill, chill, wrong, wrong, chill, wrong, wrong, chill, chill, chill. All right, all right, He's all right. Speaking the greatness, man. Relax. All right, bro. say less, say less. Uh, <laughs> le- a legend in the flesh, bro. We we knew that you were uh, a legend on the court, but you given us this time off the court, uh, and uh, you you doing everything that you're doing with the OBL. Please go watch that series. Please, if he's coming to your city, go uh, go see T Mac. Go see the OBL. Go see some guys play one on one. See who the best at that platform is. But uh, you know, this has been an exciting one for me personally. But just a, uh, an absolute legend. Appreciate you coming through. Love, right. show love. Ugh.